hello and welcome to yet another edition of Time Pass. It's not just Time Pass. We are doing serious stuff here. So please note. Uh, today we have two wonderful guests, Ritu Dalmya, who I've known for the longest time. She's a wonderful host, a superb chef, and a great raconteur. And Niket Khaitan, who I've just recently met virtually and a fascinating uh, person. Uh, is into all sorts of very interesting therapies, but today he's going to focus on sound therapy with us. So I'm going to start with Ritu because I think we're all currently obsessed uh, with food, and I think we're in the middle of this culinary renaissance. I think everyone thinks that they've become a chef. So uh, Ritu, what do you think uh, here uh, in this lockdown? You got away from Italy just in time. Let me talk a little about that. Correct. Right? Okay. Right, you got away just in time from your restaurant. Well, I'll tell you, I'm not so sure if it was such a good idea or not, huh. because uh, the reality is the lockdown is a lot harsher in India than it is in Italy at the moment. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm right now, believe it or not, I got away from Italy, but then I managed to get myself stuck in Goa. Okay. And I would like to complain about it, in spite of the fact there's been no supplies in Goa, as I'm sure you guys have all heard. Yeah. It's one state which had no supply for weeks and weeks. But I have to admit, I'm still grateful to God, at least, you know, I have fresh air around me and I have reinvented myself. You know, the best thing that could have happened to me, which I'm sure is happening to everyone around yeah. the country is that you are no longer cooking according to a recipe. You're mm. cooking now based on what's available. Exactly. And that really has been a humbling lesson for me. Uh, so it's really been an amazing journey. The beginning of lockdown was making all fancy food because the fridges were still stocked up. Right. You know, so I was doing a camembert souffle one day. I was doing a wow. uh, result. And then second week onwards, uh, the thing started changing slightly. Yeah. Third week onwards, I was stealing jackfruit from neighbors' trees <laughs> and making jackfruit curry, stealing green mangoes and making panna out of it. And now uh, it has come to a point where I don't want fancy ingredients anymore. Right. I really have come and I'm really, as I said, uh, maybe the whole world was put into COVID so I could learn to cook with <laughs> what was available rather than what's not but um, no it's been a I said it's been a great journey and Kaveri you too, said that you know me for a while and an amazing restaurant here but I think that post will not be good anymore post the lockdown because I think there will be so many new chefs who will come out of this <laughs> lockdown um, many of them who must have cooked so much food which they never did in the past yeah. And you'll see a lot of these new standalone restaurants coming with chefs who learned how to cook during the lockdown. <laughs> so you're quite hopeful of the restaurant business uh, coming back. Uh, but No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, this uh, loneliness, this solitude, this time to reflect right. has made me more acceptable to the situation. So I'm not <laughs> sitting and crying tears anymore. But... Yeah. Uh, I don't know how to explain to you. I think the world will change. Every yeah. We all know the world will change. And the sad part is restaurants, um, for Indians especially, is not a necessity. Yeah. It yeah. is a luxury. It is a serious luxury. So sooner or later, people will go out. But a lot will change. A lot yeah. will change. People will no longer go to crowded restaurants. Yeah. People are going to be very scared about the hygiene levels at the restaurant, who are the people behind the restaurant, how it's been cooked. So it's not looking very bright at the moment. Restaurants are, in fact, the last lot of people, hospitality in general, to yeah. recover. Yeah. But as I said, uh, these five weeks has done my aura and my level of calm, a lot of good. So I'm, I'm okay. I will take each step as it comes. In a way, Ritu, doesn't it remind you of your growing up years? Because uh, uh, Sorish uh, was telling me about how you grew up with uh, uncles smuggling in cheeses and all sorts yes, of exotic yeah. things. Because we grew up in a time of complete frugality, didn't we? Absolutely. Absolutely. Frugality and also you grew up in a time, we grew up in a time where uh, imports, India was a closed country. Yeah. Foreign goods were something in, sold in Palika Bazaar in uh, Calcutta. 
in AC market in uh, sorry AC market in Calcutta, Calcutta Palika Bazaar Palika in, in Delhi, Delhi. Yeah. and that Hira Panna in Mumbai. Delhi, That's Delhi. where you went yeah. uh, to buy smuggled olive oil and cheeses which had been lying in their refrigerator for three years, four years. No one <laughs> gave a shit, and you just took what came your way. You yeah. know. So, uh, in some ways, I think it's going to happen again. Not because we are a closed country, but also for me, when I go back, whenever the lockdown ends, and when I'm able to go back to Delhi, we will have to relook at all our menus all again, especially the Italian restaurants, because right. I don't think fresh supplies of cheese, olive oil, etc., is going to come back in a hurry. Yeah. So it really will. Finally, like I said, a lot of things we had already made it local, like the vegetables, meat, yeah. fish, everything was sustainable, uh, locally grown. But few things which were absolute necessity and will still remain, mm. uh, like parmesan, aged parmesan, good salami, good parma ham. I think it will be something which will be long time before we see it back on the menu. So one has to put a creative hat on now and to see how. Uh, you can still have an Italian menu without messing around with the authenticity of it, without using any imported products. Right. Um, so, in a way, the world is forcing us to become zero carbon. Uh, you know, whether we like it or not. Yes. We're eating local. We're eating seasonal. Yes. We're eating whatever we get, and uh, you know, we're making do with that. Uh, and can I tell you one thing? Obviously, yes. there's something good in it. Yeah. Because I've been here for five weeks, I'm not a very healthy human being in general, but I have never felt better. Yeah. My blood sugar is completely in control. Uh, I've never, like I said, physically, I have never been in a better shape than I have been in last five weeks. And the only reason, or the only thing I can pin it down to, is that I'm only eating local and fresh food. I am not like every meal is cooked. It's no longer about Meal cooked and you eat it tomorrow because I'm so bored. So there is no other occupational therapy. <laughs> so cooking a meal has become my day's highlight. <laughs> so I'm eating fresh food and I'm eating local food. And as I said, I want a refund from all the spas and the wellness places <laughs> I've been to over in all these years uh, because I'm have done a better detox by just eating clean than I've ever done. Great. What are the things that you can tell us today, Ritu? Because our our viewers are, uh, you know, I think mostly vegetarian. I'm not sure. Oh, wonderful. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure, but I think uh, basically, I think everyone wants to know what do you do with what you have around you. How do you make a nice, simple but wonderful meal and nourishing meal? Absolutely. So I'll tell you, many interesting things have happened in the last yeah. days. Yeah. I had a lot of. Um, pasta packets lying with me here right. okay but there were no nice vegetables there was no asparaguses no blue cheeses no sage leaves etc and then i remembered in italy in the south they used to make a pasta with loki oh. i never ordered it i never ate it because for me it was really beneath me to eat a pasta with loki I had no choice and I made it and it was delicious. It was absolutely delicious. So today it does not matter whether you want to do Italian, you want to do Indian, you want to do Asian. You right. can do anything and everything with what's available. Right. So for example, the other day I made a handwo. Okay, I love Gujarati food. I'm a closeted Gujarati in my heart, not a Marwari. <laughs> and <Don't> say that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> But it's true. I love the food, and the thing is, hanbo needs uh, carrots. Right. It needs cauliflower. It needs bottle gourd. Uh -huh. Okay, and those were the days when none of it was available because vegetables were not available. Right. So I put. I had made some sprouts at home. Right. I put lots of sprouts in it. I used a canned tin of corn. Uh -huh. Okay, mashed it a little bit. Added that, right. and should have not put onions in it since it's a Jain food. But I still put onions. And it was still amazing. So I didn't need the carrot. I didn't need right. the cabbage, which is very easily available. But in those days, it was not available to me. Right. You know. And this morning, in fact, let's see if I still have an avocado left. So yeah. I will do something for you. Yes. Uh, avocado. Yeah. I mean, luxury. Yes. So first, the yesterday was the first day in the market when an avocado with the three, four pieces, not very nice looking but it was an emotional moment so i said no i will buy it i cut it open it was disgusting 
there was no way I could have made uh, guacamole out of it, which was right. on my head. So what I did was I blended it with dahi. Uh-huh. I added a little bit of seasoning, a little bit of lemon juice, right. and added an egg white, and I set it as a mousse. Ooh. Okay, so. uh it came because it was not ripe enough to be made into a guacamole and obviously it had been lying in the cold storage for way too long right. so even leaving it outside would not have ripened it right but when you make a mousse out of it it didn't matter right so it's really been interesting times you know so also like i said went back to my calcutta memories one day made lake kaludam and this is one thing i want to tell to all your viewers yeah you know this is an amazing time to go back to the food that you grew up with because we all are living in a time when we all want to do the so called exotic food or foreign food or something which has a oom factor but in this process over the years what we have forgotten is the food that we grew up with Right. because that's something we started taking for granted mm-hmm. but the reality is today it is getting less and less cooked in any of our homes right. so for me the most fun part has been uh, making alu poshto which i've never done in my life before yeah. because i remember it from making the lake ka alu dum which the puchka walas used to sell yeah, yeah. you know i uh, made alu pethe ki sab so lot of food which for calcutta people may be an everyday food but for me was something of my memory from 30 years 35 years ago right. right so i think for all people who are there in calcutta or any part what is a great time right now for you guys to do is to take on food that you think is time consuming yeah because your maharajas used to make it or your grandmothers used to make it but the reality is all this food requires the minimal ingredients yes and all ingredients which are so easily available right right you know so lebanese is another great thing which i love to cook in these days because all i need is a bengan yeah to roast it over a fire right i don't there's no tahina available who cares who needs tahina exactly. you have you have sesame seed just roast it and make a paste of it yourself you will never spend money on a ready made tahina bottle ever again, again because the yeah. homemade tahina is so much nicer right. so baba ganosh is and homos just chickpea again tahina paste made yourself falafels i've been making a lot of falafel because i said when the days when i had no vegetables yeah. which was for about 11 days yeah. my main diet was only dry food like rice lentils legumes etc so you had to think of something uh interesting to come up with yeah. every day right. so i still remember i mean one day like we all know sabudana ki khichdi yeah. and yeah. we also know dahi bhat right. that day i had no rice so i made a dahi bhat but with sabudana mm. and i just put some fried uh, green chilies which you use for the uh, mirchi vada right. you know just but fried it the spanish way like a padron pepper and i did that on topic it was like as a hang on this is going on my new menu whenever uh, we open up again <laughs> so you don't need much the yeah. reality is you need to just be open minded yeah. you need to let go of your prefix notions and yeah. you need to play in your kitchen yeah and and you uh, need a certain amount of fearlessness i think we get of course that's something you need to let go yeah. you need to let who's going to check on you if we are in <laughs> lockdown guys even if you mess it up who cares there's another day to try the lockdown's not opening for another two weeks at least so you have 14 more tries uh ritu i want to ask a question about vegetarian and non vegetarianism because yeah. apparently there's this big debate you know this this the time that we go completely vegetarian because look what happens if you eat everything that moves etc etc but you know uh, what what's your take on that I don't agree with it I'm a vegetarian so yeah. let me first qualify that statement by saying I'm a vegetarian I prefer to be a vegetarian right. but that's my personal choice okay you but say that absolutely yeah. but saying that there is no how shall i say theory or no proof that by eating meat or chicken or fish you are increasing the chance of uh covid or any other diseases right. the way if we are talking about one uh, you know meat market yeah. forget about anyone who's not a vegetarian even if an animal eats that yeah they'll be sick 
Yeah. You see, the thing is, if people make a big story out of that, right. there is going to be a huge problem with all the poultry farmers. Yeah. There's going to be a huge pro- problem with all the processors. So at the end, I think cautiousness is one thing, but creating a panic is yet another thing. Yeah. As I said, personally, I prefer to be a vegetarian. I like being vegetarian. I also believe in Bernard Shaw, who always said, "You don't want your stomach to be the graveyards of the dead." But <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, the thing is, the reality is, this is a choice you need to make. And because it's COVID friendly or not, that's the wrong reason. Let's put it this way: right. decide to be a vegetarian, become a vegetarian for other reasons. Human beings, we don't have teeth. to eat meat the reality is our systems are not made to eat meat yeah. over a period of years our systems have gotten used to it right. so let something else be a choice but not that you will be like the you will catch the chinese virus as our wonderful mr trump trump likes to say yes. <laughs> great so ritu what you going to make for us today so listen i still have one of the shitty avocados left <laughs> um, i don't know you tell me what you guys want me to do So I've done a mousse already, but a nice cold soup, right? Because That's it's very nice. hot here. Yeah. Oh, it's hot everywhere. I think. Nikki, how is it in Calcutta? Is it hot there as well? By myself. So wait, wait. Okay. So can you see it? Yes. Hang on. Yes. So this is. You're not going to get that. This is a uh, roasted uh, green mango stolen from the garden. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to make a panna out of it. But what I'm going to do is. I'm going to add coconut, fresh coconut water in it, okay. and add some chopped coconut to make a nice uh, non-alcoholic margarita for myself in the evening, and spike it with vodka if you want. <laughs> But let you. So what I'm going to do is let's do a cold soup. You okay. know, a cold avocado soup because I have dahi. Right. Okay. And this cold soup, or if you want me not to do with avocado, I can do it with something else as well. No, uh, we can do it. Nice. But, So you know, again, I'm going to do a cheater's way. Yeah. Because normally, if I would have done it, I would have added wasabi. I would have added, uh, you know, lots of cream cheese and etc. etc. I don't have any of that bullshit. <laughs> so it's going to be so instead of cream cheese, I'm going to put dahi. Right. And the avocado, as I said, is not good enough to make a guacamole. So I'm going to quickly just churn it up, uh-huh. blend the avocado, yogurt. Yeah. some lemon juice mm-hmm. and then add one egg white if we want we can do it also without egg white and some gelatin set it up okay, okay. and next day it turns into a beautiful looking mousse serve it with cherry tomatoes fresh basil and you have a starter by itself if you don't want to set it up you have a cold avocado soup as again a meal by itself right. or you can serve it with bruschetta but right now we don't have time to set it so i'm going to do Oh, uh, uh, avocado soup. Okay. Uh, okay. Ritu, Ritu, we've just got a, a request from all our uh, panelists saying, please, instead of avocado, can you use something else which is easily? Yes, absolutely. Because I thought maybe avocado is a problem. So mm-hmm. hang on, let's see. I'm checking in my fridge. Yeah, this is some cucumber there. Can you see it? Yes, we can. Yeah. Okay. So Yogurt, how many have you taken? See? How many have you taken? No, so I've just chopped it, guys. I like to do everything under five minutes. Okay. <laughs> so now the thing is, I don't know if you guys can get hold of melon. Uh huh. If you can, that's an amazing. Not watermelon, but any other type of melon. Okay. I don't have it, so I'm going to. You see, you just I showed you the mango. Yeah. Which, the green mango, which I had roasted for my panna. Right. Okay, but now I'm going to cheat, and I'm going to do a green mango and a cucumber cold soup. Oh wow! Okay, yeah. So, can you see it, uh, Kaveri? Yes. So you put the cucumber and the green Wait. mango in the mixie, in the blender, in a mixie with some yogurt. Right. Okay, because as I said, I don't have any melon, right. and now I'm going to do a little more cheating. Yeah, I have a little bit green chutney left with me from yesterday's lunch. Uh huh. Okay, which is your regular pudina chutney or your regular hari chutney. Right. Okay, I'm adding a spoon of that to give it an oom factor. Right. Okay, I have stolen some basil from my garden. My mother would kill me if she was here. She would say, 
राख को तुलसी नहीं तोड़ते हैं बट आई है फ्रिज टू गेट सम आइस so just i will repeat i have roasted green mango yeah i have cucumber yeah i have yogurt yeah i have pudina chutney right okay lots of ice mm. salt yeah and just a pinch of sugar okay right. because the thing is green mango is tart it's right. sour yeah so i need to make and cucumber has a very neutral flavor yeah so what i want this cold soup to be sour salty a little bit sweet and a little bit spicy right. okay right hang on i am going to blend it it's going to be noisy how many cucumbers and again as i said ritu how many cucumbers sorry darling how many cucumbers have you taken? so listen for me i have made enough for okay. me so okay, okay because you're you seeing it so i've added for me for a single person i've done three cucumber ha huh? and one mango okay and i've done half a mango half a mango okay okay so let's say wait now hold your horses yeah <laughs> hang on wait and now i am going to just season it and who says in time of lockdown you cannot do pretty things okay the simple now again guys if you want to make the same thing into a mousse yeah. a cucumber musk melon mousse add a little bit of gelatin to it if you have any cream any fresh cheese add to it when you're blending it and set it up okay so you can make use this as a soup you can use this as if you uh, set it up in ice cube holders okay make little frozen cubes and serve it on top of a salad okay so it just adds that little oom factor and people will think that wow how much hard work you have done <laughs> but it's the same cucumber puree used in four different things oh this is difficult talking to you and hang on someone has just asked uh, okay. to whether we can use pudina with the cucumber and the uh, mango oh so darling as i said i didn't have cool idea of adding the cause it gives it that sharp flavor of chutney yeah right so that makes it a little uh, spunky okay you don't have dhania you use whatever yeah. it doesn't matter right. it really does not matter okay now no chef even if, although you can't see it mm -hmm. and i could pretend how delicious it is but i would still like to taste it uh. see i should have tasted it salt more okay and now what i'm going to do is just one more blend it's too thick okay the pieces of cucumber sorry guys i'm multitasking so if the video is going off okay now it's better okay so it's less here yeah yeah now just one second it's not done because yeah. you see this you have a soup Right. but this is just a green looking thing which means nothing right. right so there are two things a drizzle of olive oil uh -huh. and what i had done is i had roasted some cherry tomatoes before uh -huh. and what you can do is either you do sun dried tomato on top uh -huh. or regular tomato just right. cubed and just roasted mm -hmm. yeah and if you have any stale bread mm. just crumble it put it yeah. in the oven and make like a crispy crumble out of it okay 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 so and that's nice is that's what i'm doing with all my stale bread okay. and if you see here i don't know if you can see it yes. i had made some gluten free bread right. and what i did was i then just roasted it and this is from last week i think mm. crumbled it roasted it and stored it in a you know a uh, dry container right. and that always works wonderfully well as a garnish okay right. not only for a soup but also on salads hmm. so what i do is on top of salads i use that as a crunch factor so hmm. now let's get out in daylight hmm. so you can see 
Wow. Hang on. How do I show it to you? No, Let it, me see. see. Oh, that's lovely. Can you see it? Yes, we can. We can. Yeah? Yeah. It, and, and it looks now, so nourishing, you know? It's so, it shouldn't be, so it's, yeah. And it's delicious. As I said, it's absolutely, it's very nice. I mean, if you serve it, no one will believe that it's made just with cucumbers. And they, it's really, it's really, the color's nice, the taste is very nice, the focaccia crumble just gives it, the bread crumble gives it the crunchy factor, right. and it's so hot and humid here, which I'm sure so is every yeah. part where your viewers are watching. It's perfect, it's great lunch. Or Yeah, Ritu, we have a couple of questions on the menu. Oh, I love it. Uh, how yeah. much how much yogurt for this proportion? So I actually just put enough in nice and this two or three tablespoon. Uh -huh. I added a few uh, ice cubes because ice cubes then turned it into a liquidy and also made it cold. So right. let's put it this way: for three cucumber, two full tablespoon of yogurt. Right. Okay. I added half a roasted mango. Yeah. But I would say use a melon. I did it because I said in, and yes. the melon roasted before if you get a chance because it gives the super nice smoky flavor. Right. Okay, it doesn't just taste like a fruit juice then. Right. So melon or roasted green mango seasoning was just salt, a little bit black pepper, a little bit sugar. Yeah. And as I said, you can add lots of pudina. And I added the pudina chutney, which has really given it an oomph pout, you know, factor. Another thing you can do is instead of the bread crumble on top, you can do roasted peanuts. Ooh, That's another great That's topping nice. for it. Yeah. Uh, someone is asking, do you have to roast the cucumber or just raw? No, it was just raw. You saw, I just added, as I said, I don't like to do too much work. I'm a lazy <laughs> chef. So anything that takes too much time, I don't like to do. You know, so this was whatever I did, except for the tomatoes, you know, which was roasted and you don't even have to roast the tomatoes. I just oh. chopped up the cucumber when our line went off because remember I was supposed to do an avocado mousse. Yes. So yes. I didn't have time to, no. So, you know, with one simple thing, you can actually uh, make such a wonderful uh, uh, dish, which can be your main course and your absolute uh, everything. Uh, I'm saying this can be your main course, this can be your soup, it can be everything. It can be absolutely, one, one absolutely. And post COVID, you can serve it in little soup shots or little shot glasses as a pass around. It's an amazing snack as a pass around as well. <laughs> Great. Nikit, do you want to test your antenna on Ritu after she's done this wonderful? Uh, yeah, why not? Yeah, uh, please do. <laughs> what is what are you testing, Nikit? I'm very curious. We can test anything. Oh, wonderful. So we can so, test if this soup will work for you or not. Okay, tell me. Okay, <laughs> wonderful. Tell me. Okay, so we, we, we can test anything. Okay, so it could be a jap, it could be a mantra, it could be anything, it could be food. So if I'm testing Ritu's uh, access over here now, I'm taking it from the video. Yeah, okay. So access is over here. It's You see the antenna is moving. Right. Okay, now can you keep the soup in your hand? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is exciting. It's I wish I had known this before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. So, see the axis is aligned. So, this soup oh, is wow. good for you. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> so, you can do a small test if you like. While yeah. you're holding the soup, take a breath. No, no, not like that. Gentle, gentle. gentle. Feel the breath. Feel it. Anapana style. Yeah, just relax and feel the breath. The ease with which the breath is going. Yeah. Okay, now leave the soup aside. Okay. Now breathe again. Don't touch the soup. Okay. <laughs> is there a difference? Well, when I had the soup in my hand, I could smell the basil and there was a nice smell coming from the soup. Yeah, the smell, but the breath. Is it easier to breathe when you were holding the soup? Mm, slightly, to be honest, mm, very slight didn't, difference. Didn't realize it. I'm so overexcited by this <laughs> test of yours that I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> no, but but the fact of the matter is that whenever we are stressed out, it yeah. will affect the breathing. So it affects. No, but that is true. When I'm yeah. stressed, 
yeah my breathing is more difficult this i have noticed exactly exactly so then if we can put a strategy in place yeah to get ourselves into alignment hmm. so we can actually test what is creating stress in our system and what is uh, working for us oh i know what is creating stress in my system right now the world <laughs> around me <laughs> Well, Niket, I need to have a chat with your sister separately. I yeah. want to really see you and uh, explore this a bit more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can. No problem. Any time. So, <laughs> Niket, what what kind of uh, uh, sound therapy would work uh, safe for Ritu right now? No, see now now you you're talking about specifics, right? Yeah. So now that the basic point here is that if you want, you can you can use sound in various ways. Yeah. so you can do a jap you can do a mantra you can do a hum for that matter right. you can uh, uh, i mean play a tune in your head that will also work right so it depends on what will work for you it's right. as simple as that right. now ritu's disappeared yeah so no no it's... yeah you have to see what will work for you and it's a matter of becoming aware of what is the effect on your body right what is the effect on you whether it is helping you or not hmm. so the proof of the pudding is in the in eating and tasting the pudding right you may make yes. a nice dish it may look very nice but if it doesn't yes. taste nice then there's no point of the dish so, so like it, for instance if i were to uh, to uh, chant the mrityunjay mantra and yeah. uh, you said that it may not work for me it may Correct. work for someone else yeah so how, if we if we test you if we, test you, if we yeah. test you let's see whether your axis is aligned or not yeah okay. so it's not aligned yeah it's pretty uh-huh. out Okay, it's literally ninety degrees off just now. My God, look at this! Yeah, little. so you are pretty stressed out. Okay. So, <laughs> oh, why <laughs> Ritu very much? Ah, what did you say? Less stressed than you, but uh, yeah, but then okay, now chant the mantra. Okay, so Om Triyambakam Yajamahe uh, Sugan Sugandim Pushti Vardhanam. No, it's not working at all. Look at the Parsi. अब ये Parsi लड़की महामृत्युंजय जाप करेगी तो उसकी pronunciation सुने? Correct, Haan? correct. Adam. So that's what I said. You know that if you're not going to pronounce it properly, Haan. then it doesn't work. Okay. I, I had an interesting experience once. Uh, so I had gone to this person who was on oxygen twenty four seven. Haan. And we were testing his access. His access was out. You know, it was like totally knocked out. Haan. So I said that okay, maybe a jump will work for you. Right. So we started with uh, a jump for uh, I mean just remembering the gods and goddesses etc. Right. Right. So we started with uh, Anuman ji, Durga ji, every every one we went, and uh-huh. nothing was aligning him. <laughs> like me. Then suddenly he said that you know I'm I'm a Jain. Uh-huh. So belief uh-huh. system starts to come in. What uh-huh. Ritu just mentioned. Right. So uh, then I told him okay, start remembering your Tritankaras. Okay. And as soon as he started remembering the Tritankaras, there was one Tritankara in which, as soon as he remembered that Tritankara, the axis aligned. Okay. So I said that if there is any jap or any kind of a prayer associated with that Tritankara, okay. you start doing that. Right. So uh, and then it turned out I asked him that is there any book written by that Tritankara? Right. So then what we did was he had a book, so we put a book on his hand. Yeah. written by that tritankara and his axis aligned okay so i said that now you know keep the book with you uh uh-huh. it will help you or do uh-huh. it was my is... axis aligned or not i forgot yeah it was slightly out aligned. the cucumber could... soup aligned your axis oh, okay good <laughs> <laughs> okay so just let me complete this so uh, so then what ultimately happened was uh-huh. it turned out that he had had the same problem few years previously Okay. And someone had told him to remember or you know do the work with that same Tritankara, and he had got cured. Oh. And once he got cured, he left it. Okay. And he came back with that same issue. Okay. So it's all based on vibrations, right? Every sound has a vibratory frequency. Right. So if you are if you are going to use the correct frequency, right, it can balance you. Basically, okay. that's the game. Okay. So and uh, how do you decide what music to listen to to calm yourself down? Again, it depends on what you're used to. Or see now again, all music has a certain effect. Right. You you have to be able to assess and understand for yourself whether it's working for you or not. Right. I would always do a test. 
because yeah. I have the means. Yeah. So I would test which sound will work for you. Mm. So we did some studies. We did a study in a dyslexic center mm. where in dyslexia, what happens is you are one is to one. You're dealing with yeah. uh, one is to one teachers. We just added sound. We added a hemisync frequency. Right. The Monroe Institute technology is called hemisphere synchronization. Right. Okay, where we have two sides of the brain. The brain, the two sides start to get synchronized. Right. When we are using that technology. So we just started using music and I was testing for each of the students which track would work for them. Right. And we had very phenomenal results right. in the uh, process. Right. So uh, again, you have to test which sound would work for you. Right. So basically with Ritu, what works for her is when she's surrounded by her cooking, by her food. Possibly, yeah. possibly. Ritu, do you listen to music when you cook? Oh, lots, all the time. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. So for me, if I wasn't a chef, I always say I would have been a very good DJ. I can't <laughs> sing to save my life. I cannot yeah. sing, but yeah. that has never stopped me. So I will sing at my loudest in the bathroom when no one can listen to me. Uh -huh. But I think um, I I don't know anything about this alignment. Nothing, but I truly, actually believe. I cook better when I have music behind me. Right. There's something, there's obviously, uh, there is a thing uh, when I'm humming around and whatever. But And coming back to whether cooking makes my access <laughs> aligned or not. Again, this is something that's happened in these days. Yeah. You see, cooking had become a job for me. Right. It was a job. It is a job. Yeah. You know, the pleasure of cooking came back once again because I wasn't doing it because I had to serve X many customers, right. but I was doing it purely for the pleasure of it. Right. And when you can listen to nice music, when you can sing along, when you can, it's, it's a, it's a different ball game altogether. It's completely right. a different ball game. Right. And yeah, so, will, yeah. Sorry. So music, music will definitely change the way that you're doing things. Right. And it's been there in all cultures. It's exactly. been there. I mean, you know, when the farmers are sowing the seeds, they sing along. Yeah. And it yeah. actually transforms you. It's there yeah. in all cultures. Yeah. Singing, chanting. For example, when we yeah. are doing chanting, yeah. it automatically creates that resonance. It creates that frequency Correct. which is there. Correct. So basically, Correct. when you look at hemisync as a technology, it works yeah. on, you know, you play one sound in one year and yeah. a slightly different sound in the other year. Mm. And that distinction between the two sounds create a third sound inside your head. Mm. Now, when you're chanting, basically what's happening, one person is singing at a particular level and the mm. other person is singing at a slightly different level. And mm. when it hits that frequency and it takes you into an altered state of consciousness. Right. So that's why chanting is there in all cultures. Right. We have a question, a couple of questions for you, uh, Niket. One is, yeah. does Om chanting work in the same way? Because it's supposed to calm down the person chanting or listening to it. But personally, I've never had any such results. Okay, so again, the way that you're chanting makes a big difference. Okay, right. now there are various ways in which you can chant Om also. And there are various schools of thought vis-a-vis -vis how you can chant Om. Right. So some people say that there are three sections to Om. It's right. the A, uh, U, and then the Ma. Right. Some people say that you, uh, there is a gentleman in uh, America. He's done a lot of work with micro chakras. He right. says that in the morning, you should chant the A uh more, right. uh, the O um more, U uh more, and the Ma uh less. In the evening, it's a little different. Right. Now, also the way you chant it, from where you chant it, Okay, I can do a uh, 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 so I can do it from various places where it works for you. If you can become consciously aware as to what it is doing inside you, whether it's creating that uh, that the the vibration in your system and yeah. taking you into a state of peace and harmony, whether it's being able to do that or not. That is a feeling. So the more you can assess your bodily feeling, the better it is for you to be able to assess what is actually working for you. We have another question from Neha Parable. Is there any music or link that is universally good for everyone? Something that would share that you can share which would help calm all of us in such times. Okay, I think Hemisync works. The Hemisync, the uh, Monroe Institute uh, music works for everyone. You were hearing a track just before we started. 
yeah. don't know how you felt about it yeah so, so but having yeah. said that what i have found is that every person is slightly different right so something will suit someone better and something will suit someone a little less right. but i find that when you are lis- listening to music yeah any music that takes you into an altered state right that is good music for you so okay. you should go with your feeling because some people like uh, jazz some people like classical music some people like uh, western uh, music some people like uh, uh, i mean hindi songs right or some people like bhajans hmm. so you have to actually be universally i cannot say that everything there's some music which will suit everyone great one last question to you nikhe uh, from ganesh shar i lost my father a year and a half ago after that after that i have not been as uh, focused on my work and myself as i was i was very fast active but not so now how do i focus how do i go back to the original me with no doubt of my belief now no doubt in my belief so see now this is a question which is taking me to the monro workshops right uh, i mean I, that was not on the agenda but this question definitely leads to that right we can experience various states of consciousness right and in some of these states of consciousness which you are taken to in the monro process yeah you can actually connect with those that have passed okay and we've had many experiences here where uh, they uh, passed on parents grandparents uh, friends they come appear and they actually commune commune with the person right. it's all a matter of brain wave patterns okay right. what state of mind are you in whether you are open to receiving that communication or not right because right. everything is always present in in the universe nothing ever gets lost right so you can actually communicate with them i would invite i think it's ganesh i would invite you to join our 4 o'clock meditations we have for every day at 4 o'clock at least during this lockdown period we are having meditation every day if you uh, can connect i don't know if can i give the my number there yes please yeah so my number is 9830 32777 Nine eight three hundred. Yeah. I'll just type it here. Yeah. I think we'll all use it. <laughs> yeah. So if you all can, if you send me a message, I can add you to the groups that we formed, and you can join the four o'clock meditation. I'm sure you'll feel feel a difference. Okay. I'm sure you'll feel a difference. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ritu. You, it's been my wonderful. pleasure. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Niket. It was Thank a pleasure you. meeting you. Pleasure you meeting you too. The last of me, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not a foodie, okay? So, I'm no, really no, your sister, your sister makes up for it. It's okay. One is enough in the family. <laughs> I, okay. I eat what I get. So, <laughs> good. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. Thank Bye, Kaveri. Thank, Thank you so Thank much. You, Thank you, everyone. Take pleasure. care. Bye. And I'm going to try that cucumber soup. Bye. Ah, yes. Bye. 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 Please like our social media handles and subscribe to our channel by clicking on the bell icon.